hearing on August 5th, 2017. My dream will become a reality. And I'll die with a smile on my fucking face. Because I face the God. I face the legend. Onida. Onida! Onida! There is only one. Welcome to the official H2O Wrestling Matt Tremont Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, let's dive deep into it. Welcome to Bullshitting with the Bulldozer. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed episode one. It is yours true to Bulldozer Matt Tremont. We are back for episode number two. With the official Matt Tremont H2O Wrestling Podcast name still to be determined. Um, But I really, man, there's the first, um, I'm really trying hard uh, to work on the ums. So bear with me as time goes on. Uh, Like I said in episode one, I'm working on the fly. Um, I'm definitely going to try to uh, do my best to uh, not say um so goddamn much. Uh, But yeah, man, episode number two. we, I recorded episode one last night, uh, Sunday, March 22nd, uh, currently here for episode number two. It is Sunday, March the 23rd, Monday night, currently 9.30 p.m. I got Monday Night Raw going on in the background. Sullivan is chilling with me in his bed, eating a bone, and I am here with you guys once again to talk to the entire wrestling world as the pandemic known as the coronavirus continues uh, as the second week of our quarantine begins and the craziness uh, that is life right now for everyone uh, continues to to stroll forward. Um, (laughs) And there I go with the ums. I'm really going to try my best. Uh, Monday night, like, like I said, Monday night raw in the background. We got a tag team match going on right now. Looks like we got Ricochet and Cedric Alexander against Hector Garza and Andrade in a tag team match. Uh, I I will say um, I don't get to catch WWE live too often, but usually uh, after Raw, SmackDown, NXT, or AEW, I keep up with all of them. I try to, you know, stay up with all the current wrestling that's going on today, you know, just so, uh, you know, I'm up with the times. Um but a lot, a lot of times, I'll usually when when Raw or SmackDown will end, I will go and check the YouTube channel, and I'll go back and watch the clips there, and I or I'll be able to you know, especially now, be able to watch it live. So I got Raw in the background, and the one thing, well, the couple guys that I really enjoy, just to talk about WWE for a few minutes before we get heavy into. Uh, the bullet points and, and the notes of, of what I want to get into tonight here for podcast two. When I watch WWE, there's, you know, quite a few guys, man, I, I really enjoy watching right now that I'm like, I'll, you know, if, if they have a match on, you know, I'm going to tune in. I'm going to sit down and watch intently. Um, I really like Umberto. I, I, I don't want to butcher uh, and, and mispronounce his last name, but Umberto. Um, Andrade, uh, Hector Garza Jr., man, uh, all three of those guys, uh, and Rey Mysterio, the the tag matches, the singles matches, the multi man matches uh, that those guys have had, you know, over the course of you know the you know, last you know few months to a year, especially with Mysterio and Andrade, those have been my favorite guys to watch and and matches to watch right now in WWE. I was really hoping going into Mania. We would see like a, a fatal four way for the U.S. title with Andrade, Umberto, Garza, and Mysterio. But man, yeah, they're they're they're, my, they're they are my favorites to watch at least right now on Monday Night Raw, on SmackDown. Man, I I, I love Heavy Machinery, Otis and Tucker. Uh, Otis, I can, I can just relate to Otis. You know, big big bearded guys. Um, so I'm just a big Heavy Machinery fan. Uh, when I'm able to catch NXT, uh, I love Velveteen Dream, and I'm trying to think who else, man, really sticks out to me 
on NXT where to the point where man, like I I I can't miss that dude's match. I guess anytime Matt Riddle's on, you know, obviously you know having the it, it's it's pretty always cool to see guys that you've and guys that I've been able to work with on the independents that have you know gone on to you know greener pastures and moved on or uh, have gone up north as they used to say <laughs> or you know go to New York as they used to say. Um, but yeah, man, I had, uh, I had three or four matches with Matt Riddle before he got called up. We had, I think two or three singles matches and a tag team match. And man, we killed it every time. Some hard hitting, hard hitting, strong style matches, but all, all those matches I had with Matt Riddle, um, were, were, were extremely enjoyable. And I, I thought the fans, uh, really dug, you know, the matches that Riddle and I had, I think the last one we had was the tag with me and, and Nick Gage against Riddle and Tom Law at, at Beyond Wrestling. I, f I forget what show it was, but that was a heck of a tag team match too. That was one of the first uh, early, you know, new hate club matches. Me, me and Nick have only tag team a handful of times, but uh, th that was one of them and that was a fun one. But yeah, man, uh, you know, talking WWE, you know, there's they are they're the still, you know, rocking and rolling amongst all the craziness that is the coronavirus. You know, WWE is still, you know, doing their thing. So you, you got to can you know commend them, you know, in in some form or fashion, still being able to go out there and and entertain. It might not be everybody's cup of tea, the empty arena stuff. But, you know, at the end of the day, at least, you know, we I got, we got something to tune into on Monday night and Wednesday night and Friday night and all the other nights that there is professional wrestling programming going on um, in the mainstream market today. And and WrestleMania still going down. You know, it's going to be two nights, um, I believe, all from the performance center or they might be filming other matches or taping pre-taping stuff who knows you know it's that's out of my jurisdiction i don't i don't get up uh, involved in all that stuff but yeah wrestlemania is still going to happen you know april 5th april 4th and april 5th and i'll be watching you know ho hopefully you know that's still a good a good still two solid weeks away from today you know hopefully uh, you know, the coronavirus, you know, starts to, you know, not expand <laughs> and starts to die down a little bit. We all hope for, you know, for better news. Um, but, yeah, man, I'll be watching Mania. You know, it's, it's definitely not going to be the same type of atmosphere, especially for a lot of those matches that have had some that has had some really good build and story told behind them. And then to go out there in front of no in front of no audience it's it's definitely going to take away from the the storytelling and just those moments overall you know you hope you know you're building up drew mcintyre to face lesnar and you know say mcintyre goes over and wins the title you know hearing that pop when you win the title and having that wrestlemania moment so you're definitely not going to feel that you know it, again it's cool we'll be able to watch something but it's it, it'll definitely be a different uh, viewing experience as far as you know a WrestleMania goes. After 35 previous WrestleManias, you know the world has taken a turn, and WWE is doing you know what they want to do and can do. So yeah, Re WrestleMania will be very interesting um, in two weeks on April 4th and April 5th. But the Bulldozer will be watching. I'll be watching on the WWE Network. A, a little plug for Vince and all the guys up north for only nine ninety nine a month. I always think it's a good deal <laughs> for the WWE Network for all the, for all that content for ten bucks. Whether you're into today's product or you watch can watch, go back and watch all the other stuff that, and all the other content that they have on there. Uh, it should, it's it's a great buy. Just like IWTV. <laughs> there's another there's another quick little plug. So you know if you during all this downtime and you need something to do and something to watch, man, go subscribe to the WWE Network, subscribe to the IWTV Network, the independentwrestling.tv, and watch I th over 100 wrestling promotions at least and th probably thousands of hours of wrestling content on there. 
you know, to keep you busy, you know, during the downtime. Uh, like I said, you know, episode number two here on the official Tremont H2O podcast. Uh, I was really excited and happy after I listened back to episode number one. So, you know, a day later, you know, here now filming episode number two. And I, th- I think the overall goal is get these two first podcasts in the bag. And I will then drop off everything to Mr. Chondo and he do all that rendering and editing and all that post-production stuff that he does well and uh, send me back the the audio files. And then later this week, um, go heading in, t- head, heading towards the weekend, so, you know, so these were recorded on the 22nd and 23rd. I would say these will probably air by the 27th or 28th. Uh, closer towards the weekend later this week so if you're listening to these now you know it it might be the weekend but um you know i i hope everyone really enjoys them and i'm looking forward to hearing the feedback and if it's positive fe- positive and negative feedback you know this is uh my first time doing something like this you know like i said i'm working on the fly i'm learning as i'm going and hopefully I can stay as entertaining as possible right now for just me by myself talking to you guys. Like I said, overall, I think the goal is to be able to do this myself uh, with Jeff Cannonball, currently one half of the H2O Wrestling Tag Team Champions, alongside Mitch Vallon. Together they are known as the Lone Rangers. Airhead reference, if you're familiar with Airheads. And then over time, we'll be able to do like a watch along type thing where we'll go back and watch H2O events that are currently streaming on IWTV. Um, You know, hopefully I'll be able to, you know, interview other guests and other wrestlers and and stuff like that. So the format is going to change. I think it's 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 going to be different and it'll be, you know, like a buffet. It will we'll be able to give you a little bit of everything. So but just just for now, these first couple initial episodes will just be you know the bulldozer and and you guys you know talking and listening so i i I hope you enjoy my jibber jabber (laughs) um but yeah it's monday the 23rd of march and tonight uh you would have been obviously because of the coronavirus we're not really doing much of anything right now but every other monday night every two weeks the h2o wrestling center hosts uh, the H2O Wrestling Academy's Undiscovered Events. Those are our student shows for all the, our students of the H2O Wrestling Academy that have been training, busting their ass, and working hard. And these are their first initial matches. You know, all our students make their debuts in professional wrestling on these H2O Undiscovered Events. You know, discover the undiscovered. And we started these undiscovered shows uh, last year, Febu- February of last year, 2019, and we ran them consistently every other Monday night uh, for the entire calendar year of 2019. So we wound up doing 24 undiscovered live events last year, and they really took on a life of their own. The the undiscovered shows themselves have ha- have built their own audience, um, you know between the family and friends of the students that come out and see them and then uh, people locally. Uh, the undiscovered brand has become its own brand. Uh, you know, there's there's people I'll only see at these undiscovered shows. And, and they're fun, they're unique, they're different. They're different from the H2O main roster shows. You know, we, we, they're only, you know, $5 tickets and you're literally seeing the progression of someone starting from scratch and having their first match. And then over the course of a year, you're seeing their 25th or, tw- you know, 24th and 25th matches, you know, if they're doing undiscovered every, every other week. So you're, you're, you're seeing these kids grow right in front of your eyes. So these fans become truly become invested with you, your entire, you know, upbringing of your, of your early career. And it's 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 been pretty cool to see because the undiscovered has has become like the NXT uh, brand of of H two O. Obviously, we have our you know H two O main roster shows. We have we've done a few of the the W H two O the our like our sister women's promotion. 
And, and then we have our Undiscovered shows. And like I said, we've done 24 of them last year. And then we took, uh, I wanted to take a, a break. So people, you know, had a break from them and had something to look forward to them. And something I have always thought, you know, kind of wrestling needs sometimes is like an off season. And I mentioned that in episode one where, you know, during this pandemic, while a lot of us aren't in business and doing any kind of live events or anything, I'm kind of looking at it as like a blessing in disguise. You know, get, give the fans a break, give the wrestlers a little bit of a break, give the companies a little bit of a break as far as the stories and the angles. And it, I, it's just, it's just going to make people want to see the wrestling that much more. I think I've related it to in the first episode, kind of like the territorial days where a guy would go and work the territory for six months and then leave and then come back six months or a year later, but you come back fresh and the fans aren't and they're missing you and they're not like, Oh man, we got to see this guy again. They're not tired of you. So, you know, I look at it like that. So season one for undiscovered uh, ended uh, last December and then we took a month and a half off and we literally just came back with season two which was undiscovered 25 uh, just two weeks ago uh, it was the the end of February and uh, that first one back and then we ran Monday March 9th so you know, undiscovered 24 we came back with Undiscovered 24, I believe. I'm trying not to get the the numbers mixed up. I guess it doesn't really fucking matter. And then, uh, but two weeks ago, so two weeks ago now was the final Undiscovered we had before the, the pandemic turned, uh, ran loose and is running wild on us. And uh, that fell on my birthday, on March 9th. And uh, I wrestled uh, Devin Moore. I put the interspecies wrestling king of crazy title on the line. I haven't been able to defend that title in some time. So I hit up the, the powers that be at ISW and defended the belt when that was a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, overall, man, yeah, the Undiscovereds, they've become something of their own. The kids really work hard and they've developed it, It's their own brand now. They've, they've, it has its own audience. And like I said, there's pe there are some fans I, I only see at these Monday Night Undiscovered's. But to, j just to see the progression of all the students, you know, I'm, I'm go down my list, you know, and just try to, you know, uh, Brand Brandon, one of our students, uh, a.k.a. Dylan McKay, um, is one of our students that, you know, made his debut last year doing undiscovered and has just progressed so much he and he's our high flying you know kid out of the group and he just you know he's tremendously agile and can do all the, the, the shooting star presses and you know the, the moon salts with, with ease you know the, the kid's so athletic and he has a uh, a parkour background so you know definitely be on the lookout for dylan mckay uh, who else we got? We got Christian Ross, the full-time boss, you know, our, our consistent heel of the group. Uh, we got Chris Bradley, you know, the, the athletic jock, but I, I, you know, who's, you know, I think really starting to come into his own. And I think you might, you know, see a little bit of a different side of Chris Bradley, you know, going forward into, into 2020, you know, but, you know, him, Ross, Dill, and they've been standouts. Then, then you got um, even Josh. Uh, Josh has, has been reffing, but he's been, um, you know, he's been doing that while he's still been training to be, you know, a wrestler. And he's been, you know, really making strides at training. And Josh is somebody you'll probably see debut on Undiscovered at some point in 2020. Uh, alongside his other fellow referee right now, Leroy, um, he's probably the next student to make his debut and he was, I think he was going to make his debut tonight or at the next undiscovered. So hopefully all this ends and he'll be able to make his debut. Uh, Leroy, uh, Burrell, he's been reffing. Um, he's going to debut as the honey badger. Leroy Robinson has like a boxing gimmick. So I'm just very, very excited to see how Leroy does in front of a live audience. Um, our student, Nick. Um, AKA Nicholas Grand, man, he has really come into his own the last few months, especially as far as his character work and his in-ring work. 
and he's different from everybody here. You know, he's he's not a high flyer. He's not a brawler. You know, he's a very technical, you know, catches catch can. Uh, and as far as his character, very pompous. You know, so I, I see a lot of William Regal in him. Uh, I see Fit Finley in him. So, but he's got a lot of upside. He wrestled Jeff Cannonball. Cause, and the, the other great part of Undiscovered, a lot of our main roster veterans um, will take the time out of their night on a Monday night to come work with the students and have a match with them to help their progression and help them, you know, get better and get uh, as far as far as, you know, their in-ring work. And Cannonball, he's done a couple of them so far, uh, but he worked Nicholas Grand, I think, uh, undiscovered or two ago, and they had a really great match. It was a, a little good, just a, a good wrestling match that had a little bit of ha-ha, a ha-ha in it. Um, but o overall, the, and that was definitely Nicholas Grand's uh, best outing, you know, that he's had here so far um, in his time since he's been working here on Undiscovered. And then you got um, looking down my list of all our students. We got we got damn near close to thirty kids. So I gotta I gotta write a lot of things down sometimes because uh, I just won't remember and. The, I'll use the excuse for a, a lot of things that the wife hates that uh, I've been getting hit in the head for 13 years. So my memory isn't that bad. Isn't that good? Excuse me, which is sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. Um, but uh, Shannon, uh, AKA Miss Blakely, she's been the manager of uh, Christian Ross. Uh, she's done some ring announcing as well on the undiscovered shows. You know, she's been doing really good. Um, let's see who else. Trevor is another. He he's currently still training. Still has a, you know some time to go before he makes his debut. But he's been making strides in the last month, month and a half, two months. You know he's getting closer and closer to making his debut. Uh, we got Tyler Kane, aka GG, GG Everson. Uh, he, we I, we all look at him as like the mini bulldozer of the of all the students. Um, the 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 f funny story with GG. Um, GG Tyler, so I'll, I'll just go by Tyler. Tyler messaged me on Facebook probably two years ago, over well over two years ago, way before I even thought of opening the H2O Wrestling Academy. And this kid, you know, messaged me on Facebook. I don't know if I ever ever met him or knew of him, but he he knew of me, and he was a fan of me. And just, you know, was just a big fan of the bulldozer, which is pretty cool. And he reached out to me and he said, Matt, and I still have the, you know, the message. You know, Matt, any, when, anytime you, if you ever open up a wrestling school, I will be there. You know, I want to be taught by you. And I remember when the, when we first opened the school that first week, you know, Gigi was one of the first ones here, you know, of the first, you know, three or four kids that started with us those first couple weeks, you know, he's, he's one of the OGs and that kid stuck to his word. And when we opened the school, he was here and he's, he's come, he's come along so well uh, since he's debuted, you know, he's been able to work with some really good talent. He's had some really good matches uh, as a singles competitor and uh, him and Big Red, Ryan Redfield, who I'll get to have been tagging and they've had some tremendous tag team matches but um, you know, he, he's he's just he he's done so good. And for the kid that messaged me all those years ago, stick to the plan, wanting to be trained by myself and and pre and along with preacher here at H two O, it just means a lot. And then for him to come here and and excel and succeed and do well and chase that dream to be under those bright lights with us here in this building just means a lot. And then we got and then a lot of our students as well uh came from other places and before h2o moved into the venue we're in now this was otw an old an old time wrestling arena and which was ran by jim Molino at the time and they had their their own school as well so we were you know a lot of the otw students uh came to h2o austin luke ryan redfield um and the, the president edward hawkins We've had a couple other kids from OTW come in from time to time, uh, but those have been the three. I know, along with Danny Gallagher and Steve Sanders as well. But as far as kids that are, you know, here training every week, uh, Austin Luke, he's he another one. He's come such a such a long way. 
from his first match at Undiscovered with Jordan Oliver, you know, to he had a great match with Brandon Kirk at an Undiscovered. Like, he's just, he's done so well. Ryan Redfield, Big uh, big Red, they call him Wheat Bread <laughs> during class, and all the students. He's such a good kid. Um, he's one of the first to, first to arrive, last ones to leave. You know, you don't ever have to ask him twice to do anything, you know, to help around. He's just a good, he's just a good kid, and he's got a bright future. You know, he, he, he's uh, along with everyone else, and it's not just to blow smoke up my own student's ass. You know, all of them, you know, I, I want all these kids to come out of here and get signed and, and, and make six figures and make a living doing this. And then uh, we've had some guys that came from Pennsylvania as well, from another school and promotion, but Johnny Nova and the Suntan Superman, Darian, Darian Hardway, Darian Harris, um, you know, they came here, you know, wet behind the ears, and, you know, they just, they, they trusted us, and they have come a long way, and they are such better, better, better human, they're, they're good human beings to begin with, but they've become even better people, become, have become better performers and workers in the ring because of the time they dedicated into, into coming to training with us, you know, here at H2O and the time they've been here, you know, they, they've been doing great. Um, you also have uh, Eric Travis Doom, one of our few managers that we've had. You know, Eric's been doing a great job. We had a match at an Undiscovered where I literally beat the piss out of him. I, I felt bad for the poor dude. Uh, but, he, you know, he, he wanted it. He took it all in stride, and, and he took a butt whooping. Um, and he really helps out a lot. Uh, you know, he's helped me out a lot with a lot of things in and outside of the ring, which I greatly appreciate. And then you have uh, <laughs> Little Mark. I can't forget Little Mark, uh, the son of Mark Angel. I've known Little Mark's dad, Mark Angel, for a, a probably close to 10 years now or more. And, you know, I've, I've known his son since I've known him. And anywhere, look, anywhere Big Mark went, Little Mark went. And you, you kind of always had an inkling that, you know, Little Mark was going to venture into the wrestling business and he has and he's been doing a fantastic job he's definitely one of our standouts that's just you know seems like he can go in there with anybody and right now and have a really good match you know and then our other kid not to leave anybody else off but you know alexa oh I, I can't forget aubrey uh victoria pop you know our, our one uh female student that is that has you know had matches on on shows as well you know she, Victoria's been doing great. You know, she's had a handful of matches, and each match, you know, she definitely progressed. But um, just, you know what, fuck it now. Just to give a shout-out to all our kids, all our H2O students, you know, cause I, and I miss everybody right now, too. Like I said, tonight would have been Undiscovered, you know, our, our student show, and then the rest of this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'd see these guys four days, four times this week. The show tonight, if it were to happen, and then training Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. But, you know, just a, a quick shout-out to, to everybody that's involved here at the H2O Wrestling Academy and all our students. You got Alex, Alexa, Aubrey, Brandon, Christian, Bradley, uh, Hard R, <laughs> uh, Chris, <laughs> Brophy, Jake, Jeremy Clark, uh, Titan. He, he's our... He's our he's our student that uh you know we we all love. He's a good he's a 16-year-old kid, Titan uh Jeremy uh aka the Titan um and he's uh, our our autistic student. And man, you, you never let a disability get you down or get in the way of you chasing a dream and just because he was is autistic, you know, we still took him in when I think when I don't think other schools would, and we've given the kid a chance. And he comes in every week and works hard, um, and he's been able to manage on a couple shows. And he's he's a good kid. You you know when the Titans here and when the Titans not here, and and I, and I mean that in nothing but love. Uh, John Bryan, Josh, Leroy, uh, even even Mike B. Uh, he hasn't been here in a while, but you know he's he was always good and. He's always been a good dude when he's been around, and he and he worked hard when he was here. So, Mike, I hope you come back, buddy. <laughs> Nick, Samir, Santiago, Shannon, Shockey, Terrence, Trevor, Tyler, 
And then we had some other, uh, and one of our newer, our la last of our newer students in Bryce. Um, Bryce is a good kid. He's been coming for here for a couple months now. And then we got Austin, Ryan, Eddie, Nova, Darian, Eric, Little Mark. And then we had some new kids start up that, you know, haven't been really coming full time yet. They kind of fell off, but you always have that with the wrestling school. You know, it's once people start up, it you, you find out this might not be for you, and it kind of weans out the week. Not to say anybody's you know weak or anything, but you know uh, Zach, you know Elise, Reed, you know especially because this kid Reed had a lot of potential. So I hope Reed, I hope you come back if you ever hear this. But man, that's like thir you know thirty plus people that. Plus, even more, you know, uh, Joe has been coming in and, and training with us, one of Homicide's kids. You know, so in a week's time, oh, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, you know, th we have, you know, 30, 40, 50, you know, plus people coming in and out of the doors those three nights, whether they're students that are, you know, currently enrolled and paying tuition or just, you know, $5 mat fee guys, you know, we're here we're here to help everybody and provide a platform for everybody to learn and get better not only as a worker but as a as a human being you know the h2o wrestling academy was something i wanted to do and especially when we first moved into the venue in july of 2018 and I knew once we moved in here i'm like you know in order to you know help pay the bills you know first of all and then second of all, this was, you know, something I wanted to, you know, venture into and, and be a trainer and a teacher. And then once uh, once Preacher, you know, came along, that really solidified everything. And I knew I could open this school and have a reputable school with two good trainers, you know, that are, that are you know, different styles and that have, you know, have time and tenure in the business that will be able to drop some knowledge and, you know, really teach these kids the right way. And I will, you know, I put up our training and our students up against anybody's. And there's a lot of really good schools and teachers in the area, you know. So if if you are looking to, you know, make that venture and hop over the guardrail and come inside the ring and do it for real, you know, you have the H2 Wrestling Academy. You have the Worldwide Dojo in Bristol with Cheeseburger. Uh, you have Danny Cage uh, and the Monster Factory. You have the Wrestle Factory, you know, with Quack and Bush. Uh, you have the CZW Dojo uh, with DJ and everybody. So just right there, just within this area of you know Jersey and PA, you got four to five reputable schools. You know that are you know really you know producing a lot of really good talent. You know so and for 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 those that have you know made the choice and wanted to come to H2O and have come here and have excelled and become a better person and a better a better performer. And you've, you chose us to chase that dream and be under our bright lights and help us guide you into the future and hopefully to have a career and, and make something of this. You know, it, it really means a lot to myself, you know, and the preacher, especially during all this downtime when, you know, we don't got nothing going on. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I don't like I think I think I said it in the first episode, you know, the wife and I don't have any kids. We just have our dog, Sully. And, you know, I, I, but I look at my students as, as my kids, man, and I, I care about all of them. You know, I, I, I stay in contact with them all as much as I can on, you know, Facebook Messenger or whatever like that. But, you know, they are uh, they're my pride and joy. And, you know, I, I, I take pride in, in the obviously in H2O and the academy itself. And because I don't I don't want anybody to come out of the school and to jump into pro wrestling and start, you know, working the scene and not be ready. And, you know, that, that that's always been the goal. Just, you know, I, I want to know, you know, you know, say a, a Chris Bradley or a Christian Ross or a G.G. Everson, you know, 10 years from now, you know, hopefully they're successful and they're working the scene and making money. You know, that, that foundation that they started to build, it was because of, you know, what they did and their upbringing with H2O and the H2O Wrestling Academy with myself and Mr. Preacher Vinius James. I'm going to take a little break. We'll throw up a little commercial if you're listening to us on the YouTube channel or on the podcast, throw up a little commercial, and we will be back with episode number two on the official H2O Tremont Podcast. Thanks, guys. Be back in a minute. 
Hey guys, want to support Matt Tremont and H2O Wrestling during this crazy pandemic? Well, there's three ways that you can that can help us out tremendously. Go on Pro Wrestling Tees and purchase a Matt Tremont or H2 Wrestling t-shirt. Stream H2O Wrestling on IWTV, independentwrestling.tv. We currently have nine H2O Wrestling events currently streaming on the streaming service for only $9.99 a month. And if you're signing up for the first time, use hashtag promo code HUSTLE. And the entire H2O Wrestling Library is available on smartmarkvideo.com. All H2O events are available on DVD, MP4, and video on demand, along with the Best of the Bulldozer shoot interviews and Best of Match Compilation DVDs and downloads. So during this crazy pandemic, if there's one way you can support your favorite promotions and your favorite pro wrestlers, Seek out one of those avenues and, and help out your boys during this crazy time on IWTV, Smart Mark Video, or Pro Wrestling TV. Thank you, guys. We are back with podcast number two, the official podcast of Matt Tremont and H2O Wrestling. Quick little plug, plugging H2O on IWTV, Smart Mark, and and pro wrestling t uh, pro wrestling tees excuse me that is the best way right now you can support myself and h2o wrestling again during this downtime during the coronavirus pandemic since we aren't running shows and and doing all the fun stuff we can't do right now so the best way to support us so we have some sort of revenue coming in to uh you know keep the train on the tracks and keep the ship going is those those outlets right there so you know very thankful for you know pro wrestling tees iwtv smart mark video you know they're keeping us going uh speaking of smart mark video uh just today again monday march 23rd uh the last live event that h2o produced was saturday a week ago march 14th hardcore kingdom 4 our annual hardcore deathmatch tournament uh just dropped on smartmarkvideo.com so that is available now the h2o hardcore kingdom 4 on dvd mp4 and video on demand at smartmarkvideo.com and smvod.com so make sure you go check out uh purchase and and watch hardcore kingdom 4 i was really happy with the event top to bottom uh another solid h2o show Stockade came out as, you know, spoiler alert, St Stockade came out uh, triumphant, co conquered the kingdom, and was the Hardcore Kingdom 4 winner. Uh, Lucky uh, became the new hybrid champion, and a lot of guys on the show really had some big moments where they just raised their stock even more and became bigger stars in the eyes of the H2O, you know, audience. Guys like Chuck Payne, Raven Havoc, The Extricated, um, you know, more storylines were advanced with Ron Mathis and Low Life Louie, with Lucky and Frankie, Raven and Kit. Uh, so just a, a really good, solid show with a lot of progression behind it as far as, you know, what, what the stories and angles we have that are going on right now in H2O. Uh, so, yeah, man, check out some more markvideo.com and go and pick up and purchase Hardcore Kingdom 4, available now. Uh, on DVD, MP4, and VOD, di digital download. And you can still uh, subscribe to the IWTV, independentwrestling.tv network. Subscribe. Use the promo code HUSTLE. And we currently have nine H2O events on there. Uh, Blood Money, 305 Hoss, Destruction in Dayton, and Hardcore Kingdom 4 as well. That is the live edit. Um, the, the, so the difference between the two smart mark video currently has the fully edited, fully post produced show, you know, that double stomp video will edit together. The live edit was the actual live edit that aired and streamed live, uh, when we streamed live on IWTV back on March 14th. So that's the live edit, uh, that is available, uh, to f on replay to watch currently, along with the other eight H2O live events on IWTV. So, yeah, man, check it out. It was a really great show. Very happy. You know, all the boys went out there and worked hard. And, you know, 
yeah, we're just very happy. We're very happy with it, you know, overall. I know I talked about Kingdom uh, in episode one as well. And then uh, while while we were, uh, we were paying some bills and doing the commercial, I was checking my emails. And just, you know, the, un- the unsung heroes behind the scenes at H2O. Obviously, one is Chondo as far as, you know, filming and editing the content and then getting me the content to put up on our social media and our YouTube. And the other is Dan Cowie. Dan Cowie's been in the business for a long time uh, uh, as a commentator for Pro Wrestling Unplugged, PWU back in the day, and then for CZW. Uh, and then Dan came over here at H two O. Man, he is uh, you know his right hand man as far as you know doing the commentary at the shows, and then the behind the scenes work that he does. Man, he does all our graphics as far as you know when we have to announce stuff and need a graphic to put up, uh, match graphics you know to share on social media, all our DVD covers uh our our event posters and then other miscellaneous things that we need done as well you know so you know chando and and dan cowie are you know again the the unsung heroes behind the scenes that you know really helped me out a lot to get the to get work done and get and get you know the important things that we need to get out there done um, and dan is a, is a huge part of that i've always thought he's a underrated commentary and he does a really good job, and you know he's the he's been the voice of H two O pretty much since day one, and his since he's been here. You know, so I I, I really appreciate his work. Um, but like I said, you know, and 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 just getting an email update from him. You know, hey Matt, what you know? What do we need? What do we need to do going forward during this downtime? Uh, so like I said, like when we talked about on episode one this past weekend. You know, it was the last day that we could salvage to film some kind of content before all the restrictions, you know, from the state came down wise. You know, no more gatherings of people. So now, you know, operations are fully shut down. Um, but on Saturday, I spoke about we did, uh, we filmed a small little show with four matches called Extreme Epidemic, um, which uh, and we did some promos and some vignettes. So that show probably would be about an hour long. And then we did an hour long H2O roundtable discussion uh, that was hosted by Scotty Ceriti. And Scotty's, you know, he's newer to H2O, but he's been helping out for a while now, man. Uh, Scotty's another one, you know, an, an, another right hand man that, that helps out with a lot of stuff at the live events. And, you know, going forward, you know, so I'm, I'm very happy to have uh, Scotty a part of the, the H2O wrestling team going forward into 2020. Uh, but, you know, Dan hits me up. He's like, hey, w- what do we need? You know, so uh, it, as far as the, the, the content that we shot this past weekend, um, Dan's going to put together a DVD cover, get the lower thirds done. Um, and some other graphic stuff done. So the Extreme Epidemic uh, special empty arena show and roundtable that we filmed this past weekend, uh, we will put together as one DVD release uh, for Smart Mark Video for DVD and digital download. Uh, originally, we we're going to do some other things, but um, I think what we'll do for now, so Extreme Epidemic and the H2O roundtable discussion will all be on one DVD. So it'll probably be about two hours, a little over two hours. And we might put maybe we'll put some free matches and some other bonus content on there as well. But I think all that stuff on there for one DVD download release, uh, I think definitely get your money's worth. It was a fun little show that we filmed on Saturday, empty arena style. And the discussion, the roundtable with everybody was a lot of fun. Like I said, Scotty hosted it, and then uh, the discussion, the the panel um, was Frankie Picard, uh, Stockade, uh, Low Life Louie, myself, Devin Moore, and Sean Henderson. So guys that have been in H2O, you know, for a while, you know that that bleed H2O through and through. So you know, it was it was, uh, it was a good discussion. It was a lot of fun. Talked about some, you know, the the. The, the start of H2O and just some history overall bouncing back and forth about H2O. We talked about some certain matches, certain moments, uh, and told some funny, uh, some funny shoot stories at the end. So, um, 
that will go into production once I get all the the cameras and stuff back to Chondo this week. Uh, he'll start the post production process, and I would say you'll probably see Extreme Epidemic and this roundtable uh, DVD download release probably available on Smart Mark Video by sometime later next week, probably closer to uh, Mania weekend. April 4th, April 5th. So we got we, we we got that to look forward to at least as far as, you know, content that we're putting out. You know, Hardcore Kingdom went available today. We got Extreme Epidemic and the Roundtable discussion will be available, you know, hopefully next week. And what else we got coming up? You know, and, and well, really nothing coming up. Uh, so at least we got that to look forward to as content. And then I reached out to Chondo today. I'm like, hey, man, let's... Uh, you know, during this downtime, just to, just to stay relevant and keep the social media busy, you know, we got to keep putting, you know, something out right now, even though we don't have any live events or anything to promote and push. Um, so I reached out to him and I, I went back in the undiscovered archive and picked out a few matches that really stood out to myself of, of, of the student matches from those undiscovered shows and then some some other matches from... Uh, previous H2O, you know, shows. So I think I picked about six or seven matches. So with this week and next week, uh, we're definitely going to throw some free content up on the H2O YouTube channel. Just type in H2O or H20 Wrestling. Um, the Our channel will pop up. Make sure you hit subscribe. And we're always throwing up content on there. We I try to... You know, definitely cater to the subscribers as much as we can. We always put up free matches from WH2O, H2O, Undiscovered, promos, vignettes, you know, hype videos, DVD trailers, you know, so on and so forth. We definitely try to keep fresh content, you know, on the YouTube channel as much as possible. So, again, man, Hardcore Kingdom is available now. Extreme Epidemic will be available within the next week or so. And we'll be putting up a bunch of free matches uh, up on the H2O YouTube channel. And again, man, that's, that, that, that's the hard work of Chondo behind the scenes. That's the hard work of Dan Cowie behind the scenes. And I, you know, I, I you know, I, I couldn't run the promotion without those two guys and, and all the work that they do behind the scenes for me, you know, to get the content out, you know, get the promotional graphics out and posters and all this stuff. And then once I get all that stuff, I'm able to, you know, utilize that on the social media, put the content up on the YouTube. So when the bulldozer's not wrestling and getting bloody and doing crazy shit, um, you know, I'm booking shows and promoting shows and I'm doing all the social media, the Twitter, the Facebook, the Instagram, uploading content to the YouTube. And that stuff keeps me busy. So there, there's a little a little lack there now because of the, the pandemic that's going on. Uh, but, you know, that stuff, uh, and I never look at it as a, at any of this as work and like, oh, man, I got to I got to put all this shit up online today and I got to do this and that. I, I, I truly enjoy the, the booking process, the promoting process and just the day to day logistics of running, you know, your own wrestling company, you know, opposed to I could be doing a nine to five job and doing something I don't want to do and be miserable you know, so I'm I'm very thankful that I'm able to do something I enjoy I can I enjoy, and I can I you know and I'm fortunate enough to make a fucking living at, you know. So I, I never look any of any of this as fuck as as hard work. You know, I I I enjoy this. I I just enjoy the whole process. You know of, you know running H2O and promoting and booking and you know this that and the third and 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 this as well. This podcast. This has been a lot of fun so far. You know, it's definitely an outlet. You know, it, it, I think the, the the biggest thing is it, it's, it's, it's something to do. <laughs> um, you know, today uh, was not a very exciting day. I think I woke up a little before noon after being up till probably five or six o'clock in the morning. Slept till about noon, woke up and was surprised by one of my students. Uh, Shannon it was very nice to drop off some, you know, some food and bare essentials for me and the wife and the dog, which was very nuts of her. So, you know, again, me, me and the wife just, you know, being real and shooting the shit with you guys, man, like uh, we don't really have much family. You know, my, uh, my dad passed away four or five years ago, 
My mother lives in fucking Arkansas. Uh, I, I don't have much contact with her. Uh, my older brother, I don't talk to. Uh, my my older sister, I just started uh, reconnecting with again, so I'm hoping to see them soon. My 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 sister, my brother-in-law, my niece and nephews, and uh, and then my little brother Joe. I'll, I'll keep in contact, you know, f- f- here and there. Other than that, man, I don't I don't have much family. I don't talk to cousins or anything like that. You know, and, you know, from time to time, Chris, you'll hear from her mom and dad. And, but, you know, we only see them X amount of times a year. So, like, it really is just me, the wife, and the dog. And we really don't have much family, blood family, that we hear or see of very much. You know, so when I say, you know, H2O is a family, it really is. And those ki- those students are my kids and they're my family. And for, you know, for Shannon to come out today, you know, luckily she's still able to work during this pandemic and for her to drop off, you know, three, four, five bags of groceries a day with, you know, uh, a ro- she, I think she works at ShopRite. Um, but, you know, a ro- you know, a rotisserie chicken and, and some gallons of water and some loaves of bread and just some bare essentials like that fucking meant the world for her to drop, drop that stuff off for us today. And that really meant a lot and shit like that. I remember. Um, and for her to pay her tuition early, <laughs> so which is very nice. Because um, on the real, like the the H two O Wrestling Academy, you know, even though we're not able to run live events right now, and we have no revenue coming in from that. You know, the H two O Wrestling Center, I'll be still, I'll be able to pay the rent and pay the bills, mainly because of the H two O Wrestling Academy and all and all the students that we have enrolled, you know, pay their tuition monthly. You know, so that's going to be the the one shining light that, you know, we'll still be able to hopefully pay the rent and pay the bills, the utilities, um, because of all, just all, all our great students, you know, continuing to pay their tuition so we can, you know, keep the lights on. I tell them all the time, this is, this is their house as much as it is mine, you know, because they're here so much and it is their home. I want them, I want them to feel home when they're at their, the wrestling center. And, you know, literally, Every dollar that we get from tuition and mat fees, you know, throughout the week, all that money goes to help pay the bills. You know, I said on episode one, you know, we're, we're not a, you know, we're not a big company with big sponsors like everybody else and, and vendors and other finan- financial guys. We don't, we don't, I don't have any of that. Everything's in house and I do everything myself. So I know it's done right. And, you know, I don't, you know, not that I'm not willing to pay any other people, but you know, I'll do it myself because one, I enjoy doing it and I know it'll get done and get done right. And then, the you know, take care of Chondo and Dan and the other guys behind the scenes. Um, but yeah, just again, you know, thank you to Shannon who, who stopped by this morning, you know, with some bare essentials for the wife and I and the dog. It really means a lot. Again, them, them students are family. They're brothers, sisters, kids, whatever you, whatever you like to call them. Um, you know, they, they mean a lot to me and, and shit like that. I will remember, you know, especially, you know, when we're all, you know, going through tough times and for her to, you know, and it was pouring rain in too around noon today and for, you know, her to stop by and, and drop some stuff off for the wife and I meant a lot. So thank you, Shannon, again, you know, for doing that today. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure most of the students will probably listen to this. So if you do, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, another night, like like I said, and then that was around noon, and then she left, and I, I, I went back in my recliner, and I passed the fuck out. I just, there were, I had nothing else to do, so I'm like, fuck it, I'm just going to get some, at least get some sleep. Um, and then I woke up probably around four something. I think I ate, ate some lunch, and then I passed out again probably, and then woke up a little before 8 o'clock before we all started. And then um, shortly after, and now I'm, and then started the recording process for episode number two that we are listening to now. So yeah, that that's re- literally been my day. Wake up, s- wake up, eat, sleep, eat, sleep, and then record a podcast because there's nothing else to fucking do right now. <laughs> P- pardon, pardon my language. Um, yeah, you know, usually. You know, we would, if Mania Weekend was still happening, we would be two weeks away. So, you know, I would be in preparation for 
our H2O Death Wave show on April 4th, and all the other shows that were happening here at the building, a part of the anthology. You know, we had shows Thursday, Friday, and Saturday afternoon. You know, so my usual process two weeks out before a show, one is just getting the arena ready, and I always keep the building clean and tip top shape because I just I like having a clean building. So, you know, making sure the building is set, making sure, you know, any kind of gimmicks or weapons we need. I get down from upstairs or if we have to go out and get it, I get all that stuff settled. You know, then I'll, you know, usually usually a week before or a couple days before is when I'll book the order of the card. You know, I, I like being organic and just and, and not playing and too too far out because i'm i might change how i feel i might book the card a week in advance and then a couple days later i'm like yeah you know what i, I might want to change that i i, I want to put that match in the first half or put that match in the second half you know so I'll, I'll probably revise the card a couple times before you know the final card is set and then it's usually when i'll post uh to the boys in the locker room in our in our you know private group you know all right hey guys you know show's coming up you know, here's the lineup. Let me know if you need anything, and and this is what we're doing. And then usually I'll uh, I'll check the DVD inventory and see what DVD covers I'd have to get printed. I'll throw that on the flash drive. Hop over to the Staples down the street on the Black Horse Pike, print out the DVD covers, uh, print out the event posters for the boys to sign and for us to sell at the show. You know, get the music together, send the music lineup to Dan. Um, and yeah, and then you know, make sure the concessions are stock. So usually, I mean, a, a decent amount of stuff to do in preparation for a show. And then you know, this would have been a little bit more because we had three other shows going on. So it was you know, helping out Shocky run his show, making sure then Synergy would be good the next night. Sean the 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 next day in the afternoon, you know, make so that's you know, and then our show that night. So that's four days of concessions that I got to keep stocked and and buy stuff for and. Uh, man, let me tell you, owning a building and, and, and running shows in here all the time, the, the bare essentials that you need to keep stocked since I've had the H2O Wrestling Center has been open. Man, we go through toilet paper like it's nothing. We go through paper towels, <laughs> pretty fucking crazy, um, and contractor trash bags. We, we go through so much trash um, that I'll, we'll get together, you know, that'll stockpile for like a week or two and then all the big contractor bags and like all the broken doors and glass after hardcore shows uh we we take across the street to the public works uh after you know every every couple shows so like just the daily upkeep of the building you know every day every week every month you know it's it's a lot of work and 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 the money adds up you know, as far as buying all that stuff, you know, and that's where, you know, the, the, the tuition comes in and helps, you know, the mat fees and, you know, money, you know, after, after a live show, you know, after Hardcore Kingdom, like, all right, you know, here's, here's what the payroll is to take care and pay all the boys. And all right, I got to take X amount of dollars out. You know, hopefully we did good at the, you know, the door and on merch and on food. And now I can put that money back into the building to buy toilet paper, paper towels, trash bags, you know, uh, a new broom if a fucking broom breaks. And then, um, you know, and then money back into the company to, you know, buy DVDs and DVD cases and DVDs to burn all the DVDs. Because, I you know, I burn all the H2O DVDs. And it was one of the uh, uh, investments a couple of years ago. I dropped three, four hundred bucks on a on a DVD tower, you know, that burns all the DVDs. So like, I'm always up to usually the night before a show, or the that day or the day before, you know, I'm up till two, three, four o'clock in the morning, burning DVDs and cutting DVD covers to put them in the cases. So like all all that little stuff, you know, I'm doing, you know, so that that DVD you're buying at the show you know, the bulldozer put together for you. Um, and I, again, I, I, I just, I, I enjoy doing all that little stuff and just the overall process of, of, of all this. I, I, I really do fucking love it, you know, and then wrestling on top of it, you know, so that, that's all. And that's a whole nother world. And again, that's a whole nother topic, you know, that I can do on, on a future podcast. So, you know, Waking up on a Saturday afternoon, typically, you know, usually a show day, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be up by, I'll try to get up by 10 a.m. 
and then start, you know, rocking and rolling by noon and getting everything together and ready, get the building ready. Students will start showing up around, you know, two, three, four o'clock. And then, then it's bell, you know, then we open doors, then it's bell. So, and then running the show, making sure everything's going okay. And then at some point, Hey, Oh yeah, I got to wrestle. Um, and you know, I've done that quite, quite a amount of times, you know, especially big, big death matches too. And, and, so you have all that and then throw the the live aspect of on it because our November show uh, back in November, Deathmatch Extravaganza number two was the first time we ever did anything live streaming. So we went live on Fight TV for the first time in, in, in back in November. And then we went live on Fight again in January for Subterranean Violence Volume 666, which was me and Casanova inside the barbed wire cage and then this past weekend uh two or well, two weeks ago now uh hardcore kingdom we streamed live for the first time on iwtv so you know three out of our uh, aside from our christmas show three of our last four live events have all been streamed live for the first time so you know i already have my usual routine of what we got to do you know, for a show and then the, you know, mentally getting ready for, you know, a big crazy death match and then making sure everything's together and ready for smart mark video for them to come in to set up, uh, and, you know, hook up to the internet and be able to go live and do the live streaming. And, you know, it's, you know, we, like I said, we've gone live three times so far and, you know, the streams were great and nothing but positive feedback after those three shows and those are three of those are three of our biggest shows you know that we do death max extravaganza is a big annual show that we do subterranean violence is one of our biggest if not our biggest shows that we do and hardcore kingdom um so and, and, and i thought all three uh were successes in their own rights as far as you know pay-per-view buys would fight and how you know the 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 amount of people that watched us on IWTV a couple of weeks ago, you know, just it's just all about getting new eyes on the product and creating new revenue streams for the company, you know, new avenues of revenue to come in for us. So yeah, I mean they were fun, but uh, definitely on a future podcast, definitely maybe go into a little more details as far as just the the, the day to day of, of uh, you know what I got to do on show day on top of wrestling on top of everything else you know so definitely uh, look forward to uh, you know going in a, a little bit more in depth you know as far as that and you know putting one episode in the bag and episode two you know Coming shortly to a close in a few minutes. I, th I I I believe we're coming up almost on an hour. Shortly, I think the first podcast was a little over an hour, maybe like an hour and eleven minutes. So I'm going to try to keep it about an hour, a little over an hour for these things. And I guess just to you know reflect back on you know we at least for this for this second episode, you know we talked a little WWE. Uh, talked about the H2O Wrestling Academy and our students and our undiscovered events and, and the progression of those guys. IWTV and Smart Mark. And then when we came back with the second half with Kingdom and just the behind the scenes and my right hand man guys and, you know, what we're going to be doing content wise. Uh, I guess this net now overall to reflect, you know, didn't see much different news as far as like the pandemic and stuff and what's going, but it just, it looks like for the foreseeable future, you know, we are in this lockdown and it, it is the, you know, stay at home protocol, you know, so not, not everybody's going outside and putting anybody at risk and hopefully people are, 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 are abiding by that and we're able to control this fucking thing and get this damn thing out of here and done. And, you know, I'm, trying to be realistic you know I'm, I'm not a doctor i can't tell anybody when this thing's going to end but you know at you know almost march you know middle of march you know tentatively our next live event would be april 4th i don't think we'll be we're going to be able to do that you know so i have hope for maybe the end of the end of april to come back 
and and get get the ball rolling again with with you know H two O shows and and then our student shows and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm I'm hoping you know we're able to get back into business by the end of April and uh, you know reschedule the Death Wave event you know for the best you know date that we can get that's available and then get and just get the ship you know rock and rolling again. Uh, figure out what we're going to do with Ohio for Hustle Palooza. Um, and then all these lo- all these roads lead to our big four year anniversary show uh, in June, which I'd like to keep in at June twentieth as well. And like the big thing going into June, you know, we plan on bringing Man Man Pondo back in for the first time. He hasn't been with us since he was last with us at the first year anniversary show back in twenty seventeen. So you know, it'll be Pondo's first time here in three years. Uh, and then the big selling point for this show uh, was the de- debuting a new championship, which was going to be, and hopefully still will be, the the H two O Super Deathmatch Championship. Um, but with all the stuff going on right now, you know, my plan was, you know, after Hardcore Kingdom, you know, have a little bit of money, you know, profit wise to purchase uh, to get the belt made and. Um, uh, what Roch with I with Inner Species, you know, he designs those belts and gets them made. And but you know, with no other income coming in right now, you know, my my plan was to order it after Hardcore Kingdom, and then you know we just weren't able to make the numbers we were able to make, and then you know we had to, and then all this pandemic stuff happened, you know. So right now, as of as of this podcast right now, you know, I still haven't been able to, you know, put that order in for the belt. And that's a six to eight week process to get it designed and get it made and get it shipped here. So I'm hoping, uh, you know, things, things fall into place and, you know, some income starts coming in from something and can still get this, you know, awesome designed super deathmatch title uh, that Roger the fucking designed, uh, get that made and get that here. And crown a crown our first super deathmatch champion at H two O at the anniversary show, so hopefully all this can you know come to fruition and we can we can do all this. You know, the anniversary show uh, to me has always been you know one of the bigger shows of the year. Uh, it's usually been you know my favorite shows of the year. Uh, the the one year anniversary for H two O still one of my favorite events, you know, that we've had in the company's, you know, you know, short tenure so far, you know, H two O as a whole, you know, we're not even four years old yet. You know, we, we just started in June of 2016. So for a young company that's had, I think we've had a little over 40 live events as far as like main roster shows uh, in the company's history so far, I think we're at 43 or 44, and we've had, you know, 25 student shows, you know, so, you know, to produce 60 plus live events in less than four years, you know, not not too bad of a ratio. And a majority of that has been the last year and a half since we moved into the building, you know, because the company when we first started was just something for fun and we were just a part time thing. Um, again, I think that, and then that's another whole topic uh, we can definitely do down the line for the podcast and just going over a little bit more of the. Uh, early history of H2O and w- why I wanted to start my own promotion uh, when I was already with another promotion as well because you know I started booking not booking but you know promoting OP on point wrestling OPW back in 2013 with uh, Jeffrey Kane and who's still running on point to this day and they're back now running here at the H2O Wrestling Center. Uh, so yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of really good topics and things we can talk about on the on the future of this thing, which would be awesome to talk about and just get out there. You know, a, a lot of uh, you know, quite a few things I've I've touched on over the years, but I've never really gone into you know big detail. And if people are interested in it and willing to hear me blab about it, I, I am more than willing. <laughs> uh, you know, to, to, to divulge some, you know, behind the scenes stuff and, you know, as far as the early days of H2O and, and, and why we're doing what we're doing, you know, so that, that, uh, that gets me excited and motivated to want to keep, you know, doing this, sitting down here, you know, talking into the microphone and, and, and giving you guys some interest and stuff to listen to. So I definitely look forward to, you know, talking about the, just the history 
you know, overall of the company. Um, and then the, the, the evolution overall of what this podcast will be again, like I hope I said, like, you know, it'll be a buffet, you know, I want the podcast to be a little bit of everything. You know, sometimes it might just be me talking to you guys. Uh, I hope to be joined soon, uh, by co-host Mr. Jeff Cannonball, um, you know, talk about old, older H2O shows that are, you know, that you guys can watch along after you listen to the podcast and have a more, you know, in-depth look into, you know, that certain in particular H2O show, like a Blood Money or the 305 Hall show that are on IWTV. Uh, and then get some guests on here as well. Get some H2O town on here. You know, I, w- I would love to sit down and talk with Low Life Louie for an hour. Um, you know, sit down and talk with M- Mitch Valen, one half of the tag champs. Sit down and talk to Lucky. You know, he's he's got a great Lucky 13. Our, our current hybrid champion has a has a great story. You know, he, he you know, was pretty much took a break from the business and w- was looking for a, a new place to call home for him to get his foot you know, back, you know, and just into the groove of things. And he came here just for H2O and he's been fucking killing it since he came back. And he, he's always been a, f- a fantastic talent, you know, and Lucky's another guy, you know, I would hope like, you know, I can call H2, I can call Lucky an H2O guy, you know, since he's been here, he's had some of the best matches, you know, that we've had in this building and in the company's history. Um, you know, he was, you know, heavyweight. He was our heavyweight champion for nine months, and you know, uh, and continue to have great matches. And now he's the hybrid champion. He's the first person to hold both the hybrid and the heavyweight titles. So he's just he's he's got a great story in general, and then he's got a great story with with H two O as well. And then guys like Stockade. Um, who else? We got? I'd love to talk to me. G, G- Raver. Um, and, and even, you know, the, uh, the true, you know, H2O guys that you can really only see, you know, at H2O guys like Mark Angel, uh, and, you know, all three of the extricated and, you know, even, uh, you know, our current champion, Ron Mathis, Mathis, you know, is, is extremely underrated. He's, he's been the top heel at H2O since he's been here at H2O and he's been here since the third show, you know, hardcore kingdom one. Uh, February 2017, you know, so he's pretty much been here since the beginning, and there's a reason why, you know, he's been a two-time H2O champion, and, you know, his first title reign, you know, was great as it was, you know, just a, a, because of the testament to, of, of his hard work. So there's so many guys I'd like to sit down with on the roster and just be able to chat with that I don't really usually have the, you know, the time you know, to do so and really go in depth, you know, with some certain stuff. So definitely, again, looking forward to so many things that we will be able to do with this podcast, keep it entertaining, get the word out there and, you know, hopefully make it one of those wrestling podcasts, just podcasts in general that'll have, you know, just good, genuine discussion with people, you know, and keep people in, you know, interested. And uh, yeah, who who knows? I mean, I, I listen to, you know, Cole Cabana's podcast religiously when he first started it and whether it was just episodes with just him or with a guest, you know, so, you know, he was a early, early inspiration of just being like a DIY do it yourself guy. And especially when I, when I first opened my store, you know, Bulldozers Collectibles, if you didn't know, I had my own, you know, pro wrestling retail store. It was just, it was all pro wrestling memorabilia you know, new and old, uh, inside the Berlin farmer's market. Uh, we were open for probably three years, something like that. And, you know, yeah, Cole Cabana was one of my early inspirations. You know, Hey man, like you can do anything you want. Like, I know it's cliche to hear, but yeah, if you do fucking put your mind to something and like, Hey, this is what I want to do. And I want to do it. You're going to fucking do it. And I did that, you know, I, I didn't have any experience in retail business or running my own small business, but, you know, I had the, my brother-in-law was able to, you know, uh, give me the opportunity, uh, to take over, you know, his old store and then got what I needed to do to get, you know, the, the paperwork and the licensing and everything to, to run a business. And yeah, I, I, I ran that for about three years and it was a lot of fun. So again, another topic you know, we can talk about opening that store. You know, I just, I've, I've been able to do 
so many different things at 31 years old uh, that I'm, you know, pretty, pretty damn, you know, proud of. And, you know, I, I take a lot of, you know, a lot of pride in what I've been able to accomplish in life for being a high school senior dropout. I, I don't have a high school diploma. I don't have a college degree. I don't have any kind of trade or any kind of background. You know, I, I dropped out of high school my senior year, uh, to pursue pro wrestling full time. You know, I, I'm dry, you know, I, I knew I was going to be successful in life with or without that piece of paper. And I hated, I hated school and you know, the, the, the first girlfriend dumped me and I just wanted to get away and I wanted to jump into pro wrestling and that's what I did. And I, and, uh, you know, again, another, another, you know, big topic that I can jump down to into, especially if you haven't seen any of the million shoot interviews I've done over the years I've done, I did one for RF, I did one for smart Mark and I put one out on my own a couple of years ago. So the last shoot interview I put out was like 2016. So if you haven't seen those and you, you're, you haven't kept up with me in the last three to four years, I, I've had so much go on in the last fucking three to four years, you know, open and closed the store, you know, moved H2O into our own facility and, you know, accomplished so much in the wrestling business. So like, yeah, that definitely, uh, keeps me excited. Uh, as I'm talking to you, all this stuff is popping in my head of, oh yeah, yeah, we can talk about this. We can talk about that. Um, you know, hopefully at some point be able to, you know, have people call in and do like a and a episode and ask questions. Cause there's probably, there's going to be things I've totally forgotten about. Uh, that I'll forget to even talk about. I, I've, I'm trying to remember that saying that, you know, you've you've learned so much. I've I've learned so much, but I've forgotten so much of it. You know, over times, something like that. I, I fucking forget. But I, I think you know what I'm saying. I, I, that 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 saying, you know, I, you you get to the point. You know, you learn so much that you you forget half of it you know, over the years, but uh, yeah, I've, I've learned so much knowledge of, of so many vast different arrays of things over the years. It's, it's pretty crazy. And I got to write everything down. I have so many, I have my, my book bag. I, you know, I take with me everywhere and I have so many notebooks full. One notebook is just ideas for booking and like H2O and match stipulations and finishes and ideas for gimmicks that's one notebook and then a, a notebook for me. And as far as like the bulldozer and Steve creative, you know, if I, if I get, you know, a promo idea or any kind of ideas in general, I got a, a, a notebook for that, a notebook for this, you know, keeping all the H2O paperwork, you know, in one folder, all the Academy paperwork in another, you know, I, I know. And, and, and it's 2020 and everything, everybody's technology and everybody, you know, has everything on a laptop or a, an iPad or something. You know, I got a little notebook, you know, little, you know, little notebook laptop, um, you know, that I'll do my work on and check my emails. But I'm, I'm still old school and I, st I still like writing everything down just in case because, you know, fucking computer could shit the bed or something. But I still got everything written down, so I'm not going to lose that unless I you know, God forbid was in a fire or some shit. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I think, uh, wrapping up here on this, uh, second episode of the official Matt Tremont H2O wrestling podcast. I know, uh, I'll, I'll divulge some of the names that have been, uh, thrown at me so far. I, uh, my wife, threw at me as far as the name for the podcast i think matt tremont hustle and company i like that one or i could be wrong it could be something else or just like or just keep it out is like you know the official matt tremont h2 wrestling podcast uh the other one that i've had for a while that uh dana has actually already made a graphic for me that i'll throw up and see how people feel um, was just, uh, call it bullshitting with the bulldozer, you know, the official, you know, H2O wrestling presents bullshitting with the bulldozer, uh, the official Matt Tremont podcast. So I, th I think we'll go for that just for now, because I already have a graphic made. <laughs> um, so we'll see that, how that goes. 
I'll put it up online and get people's thoughts and see how people uh, feel about the name and the logo and all that. But yeah, overall, looking forward to the prod the the podcast process. And uh, after we wrap this second episode up, getting all the content to Chando. And then he'll send me all the uh, MP4 files. And then later this week, I will be able to uh, get all the content out there on multiple different platforms. And then I, I, I look and anticipate uh, all of your feedback on these first two episodes. Um, yeah, so I, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, again, cause it's something new. So I, 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 you know, I really want to hear feedback on, on what people are, th- are thinking about these so far. And again, this is just the, the first chapter of the podcast. We're going to do a lot of different things. It's not just going to be me bullshitting with you. Uh, it's going to be a lot of other people. We're going to be talking and doing a lot of things. So I, I definitely look forward to it. Um, it is currently now 1115 at night. I got Brock Lesnar versus Triple H, no holes barred, WrestleMania 29 match playing on the laptop. WWE's been putting out a lot of free matches on the YouTube, so I've just been gobbling them up uh, since I have nothing to do at the moment. Um, so yeah, so we'll put these first two out. We'll get some feedback, and then hopefully next week um, we'll record you know, another podcast or two and get them in the bag and then release those. And then we'll go from there. You know, the 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 growth of the product and the future of the podcast is up to you guys. And you guys have always supported me since day one within any venture, you know, I've been involved with. And, you know, without you guys, I don't have anything. I don't have your support. I don't have anything. Um, so as always, I, I can't thank you crazy bastards enough. Uh, for supporting me over the years and for now, you know, and hopefully supporting this new venture of bullshitting with the bulldozer and the, the official match stream on H2O wrestling podcast. Uh, tomorrow is Tuesday and it is another day alive and on earth and not affected by this virus. We're not sick with it. And, you know, I, I want everybody else out there to be safe, be well, uh, Stay safe, don't get sick, stay indoors, and abide by the fucking rules so this pandemic can come to an end and we can all go back to enjoying our regular lives. Independent wrestling, again, will come back stronger than ever and we can all get back to, uh, you know, you guys buying tickets and coming to support us. And I I look forward to lacing up my boots uh, again in the near future and getting in that ring and doing what I do best and doing what we all do best, and that is just fucking enjoying professional fucking wrestling. Thank you guys for enjoying and listening to episode number two. I think I'm just going to go with it, bullshitting with the bulldozer, the official H2O Matt Tremont fucking podcast. Thank you guys. Much love. Talk to you soon. Fuck you, coronavirus. I'm out of here.